Hello and welcome. I'm DDF Racer, and in today's video, I'm going to be taking a look at something which most sim racers probably find either too confusing or too intimidating, but to be honest, they could actually benefit from massively. Telemetry. You've probably seen it before. A screen full of graphs, numbers and squiggles which relate to sensors in the car, things like brake input, steering angle, top speed and suspension travel. Pretty much every sim out there right now automatically logs this data already, but how do you get access to it? How do you go about actually making any sense of it? A couple of months ago, I was lucky enough to have pro racing driver Mike Epps on the channel, link on top of the screen right now, where he taught me a few things about front wheel drive cars. Towards the end of the video, completely off script and unprompted, he sent over some telemetry for my laps and it just blew my mind. I'm, I'm having a moment right now, Mike. I'm like, that's, look at that. <laughs> Yeah, you could you could sell you could sell equipment with a data analysis sheet. Wow! I think I already have to be honest. Quite <laughs> now, what this made me realise was that even if you think you've driven a corner perfectly or done a really good lap, you might actually be losing a heap of time in a certain sector you had no idea about. And that's the beauty of telemetry: it takes out all of the guesswork and all of the misconceptions, and just gives you some solid hard data to look at. But to make any use of it, you actually need to know what you're looking at. Now, I've always wanted to get my head around using telemetry, but when Whenever I'd done some research, it just seemed too complicated. And also, there wasn't any free software out there. You always had to pay for a license, and I didn't really want to spend any money, which is, I'm sure, something that many of you guys can relate to as well. That was until fellow OzNZ sim racing driver Demo Slavic, aka Kiwi Brick, pointed me in the direction of a little piece of software called Z1 Analyzer. Now it's completely free to try, and using the dashboard section of this app, it records all of the data from the sim and saves it into log files which can be opened up in the analyzer later. Although without a license it does rather annoyingly shut down after 15 minutes, but you can reopen it again. The layout is pretty easy to get your head around to and is completely customizable, so you can decide what data you want to see about your lap. And if you don't know what data you do want to see, then Z1 Analyzer can even break it down and give you specific pointers on where to improve, such as where you're locking the brakes, missing apexes, or just not using all of the track available. It can also compare two laps against each other and point out which specific corners were faster, and which ones were slower really, and that's particularly useful when you're trying out new lines or tweaking the car setup. These are just the basics though, and yeah, I know the software can do a lot more than this, but this video is all about the basics. I just want to get you guys up to speed and show you how easy it is to use your telemetry. With a little bit of know-how, pretty much anybody can just access this fundamental information and improve their driving. So. Time to go and get a base lap in. I'm going to be using the Porsche Carrera Cup Deutschland 2019 car at Oschersleben in Race Room Racing Experience because this is a circuit that I'm relatively familiar with but not overly familiar with so I know there will be plenty more time to find. Also I picked this Porsche because it's quite a stable car and quite a modern car so I should be able to get some consistent times in but it does not have ABS or traction control which puts the emphasis back on the driver inputs and not on the electronics because being able to slam the brakes and the accelerator kind of defeats the whole point of this video. To make the data consistent, I'll be using Race Room's leaderboard mode, which keeps the tires, brakes, fuel, and track conditions identical across every lap.
Okay guys, so here we are. Let's have a look at the telemetry from our first lap. Now this is my first time looking at this screen, so I'm going to run through it at the same time as you, but you can see there we've got the track map, we've got our throttle trace, our brake trace, our steering perspective, tyre temperatures, wheel speed, shock deflections, gears, RPMs, and overall speed. Because we're not really dealing with tyre temperatures or suspension change or anything, I'm going to get rid of those straight away, and it's really easy. Just click the X, and I'm going to drag the throttle and the brake over to the right hand side of the screen just so you can see them. There's a little webcam in the bottom left corner of the screen. I don't need that to get in the way. So let's make it a little bit more user friendly. So we can see on the map we have our braking points in red and our acceleration zones in green. Let's have a look at the trace as well. So if we have a look at the brakes, let's make them bigger. If you click and drag, you can actually zoom in on the entire point. So yeah, we can have a look in further detail. So we're actually going almost to 100% on the brakes here backing off going back again backing off going back on again so you've got a very lumpy looking trace basically and then it backs off again suddenly and then i reapply the brakes again so i'm constantly kind of going in between i'm breaking too much i'm breaking too little i'm breaking too much that should really be a lot smoother i should maybe have a stronger application of brakes and then come off gradually like i'm this looks very reactive to me, so I think I can gain more time by being a little bit more consistent. And you can see it here again as well. So we're breaking for this next corner here. I've initially braked, kind of kept it, and then trailed off a bit and just dragged the brakes a little bit. And you can definitely see it here as well in this final corner. I think this is the final section. Let's have a look on the map. Yeah, this is heading into the final corner here. You can see big application of brakes as we approach the corner, and it goes whoop straight off again. Maybe this is me just thinking I've locked up, where in fact I haven't really locked up. And let's have a look at the throttle, because one thing I noticed was that it seemed to be very twitchy under acceleration. It felt like ages since I could get back on the throttle again. There's little blips here as the car shifts down. That's what those little boinks in the, in the, in the graph are. So I've shifted down, shifted down, completely off the throttle here, and then almost back to full throttle before coming completely off the throttle again back onto full throttle. Look how pointy that is. I did not realize my accelerator was being so inconsistent. It's very up and down and up and down. It's like I'm kind of pogoing the car waiting to accelerate. Where else did I feel like I was struggling? This section here. When we just tap the brakes, we're coming off the brakes here and then a dab on the throttle again. So it's like I've braked too much and then gotten back on the throttle to give it more speed again. So maybe less brakes here and carry more speed through the apex. And then, yeah, the throttle is very on off. I mean, there's not really much of that going on, you know? It's just me being a bit twitchy on the throttle. If you're applying the throttle unevenly, that is shifting the weight in the car. It's messing with the tires and you don't want that. You want it to be nice and smooth, nice and stable. So let's have a quick look at the lap comparison page and let's see if that actually matches up with what I was looking at in the data. It says that the brake analysis, no lockups occurred, which is good. Now, according to the driving line, it's okay, but I'm making mistakes. I barely missed the apexes at turn six and 13. I also just missed the apex in turn one and five. Maybe I need to keep it a bit tighter there. And it says as well that I'm coming off the throttle, exiting turn 14, so that's the final corner so maybe I'm going into turn 14 a little bit too hot and I'm having to come off the throttle to balance the car again basically and perfect timing that is the demo mode of Z1 Analyzer guys. <laughs> I've had 15 minutes looking at my data so far and it has shut me down. This is going to get quite annoying. Okay so I've just loaded up the software again just to have another little look and see exactly what I want to do before I head back out on track. Wow look at the detail in this. The braking points I can see exactly how long I was on the brakes for and this is pretty cool as well. This is the driving line view. I can see exactly what my lines were. So I can see through turn one here, pretty much straight lined it and then swung out wide, came all the way back and then, hmm, I wonder if there's a better way to do that, keeping it tighter and more to the left hand side here and then swinging it round in the apex. I don't know, it's, always, it's a bit of a clumsy corner that one. You can see here, I completely straight lined this. That is definitely the path of least resistance there, so I think that's good. And I can see here in the final corner, my line's all wrong. Going in too hot, basically overcooking the exit. And this is what I said before, I was lifting out on the exit, so I think I need to basically take less speed at the apex. That's pretty much it. That's the analysis that comes as standard with Z1 Analyzer. That's 
pretty impressive stuff really. So let's go out and do the lap and see if I can improve it. Alright guys, so I've gone out and done another lap, and I've actually gone and found half a second. I don't know where that came from, but let's go and find out. I was half a second faster in the first sector, and a tenth up in the third sector, and a tenth down in the second sector, so all of that really was in the first part of the lap. My driving line was good, but I'm still missing apexes, most notably turn four and five. Those are the fast left-handers in the first section. And apparently I'm still backing off the throttle in the final corner, so I need to keep an eye on that. I gained the most time in turn two. Okay, so this is pretty cool. This is analysis of the lap. And I can see side by side where I'm braking and where I'm accelerating on each lap. It looks like I just got on the throttle earlier through turn two on my second lap and again braking through this corner is pretty much the same the gear shift is the same i still had that acceleration wobble going through turn four and five it wasn't quite as severe now let's have a look at the driving line this will be interesting the red line is my fastest time and the blue line is my slower time from before so i can see that i gained the most time through turn one and two and through turn two my original line put me out really wide and i kind of just hung it around the outside here whereas on my second lap on the red line i was a lot closer to the apex and held it a lot tighter so basically i've shortcutted the track and saved myself half a second in that one corner this section is a little bit different on my second lap i went out a lot wider here and then cut back a bit more was whereas on the blue i held it more to the apex and then run it out wide i ended up going in shallower here look you can see on the entry the red line is shallower holds the apex the same but then i actually get out of it here so then let's move along to the chicane yeah that's good i used more of the track on entry still hit the apex kept it over to the right more and then could carry more speed through the apex by taking a tighter line there that was good overall it was half a second up but that was all done in this corner here you see a massive difference here so that is definitely the better line to take the throttle was a lot smoother as well yeah we got off the throttle but we got back on again pretty quick and it was a lot more steady it's a lot more smooth the delivery of the power was much better and you can see here wow that's huge look at this section here this is where a heap of time was made up so the green line is my faster lap and the gray line is my slower lap you can see here i'm on the power more and i'm on the power sooner you can see it peaks out here at 100 throttle i was on the throttle a full second earlier that speed is going to carry all the way down the next straight so let's have a quick look at this and see how we can improve for our third and final run and hopefully get an even better lap uh, apparently sector two was a lot slower so i can see right here through the faster right hander didn't really work because it kept it shallow and same for the switchback chicane as well that was a much shallower much shallower line i need to basically look at my entries where i'm positioning the car and entry in the chicanes because that is really affecting my speed i also need to look at the final corner as well there's something about that final corner i'm just not getting time on the exit maybe i need to kill more speed at the apex anyway let's go and give it a go
Okay guys, so there we go, another lap on the board, which was the best time of a 1 minute 31.199, so that was quite a bit faster, 3 quarters of a second faster than our previous lap, so let's go and have a look at the data and see if we actually managed to put of our previous tips to good use. Uh, driving line, apparently I was very wide at turn 1 and I missed the apex at turn 4. I'm still backing off the throttle in the final corner so there's something fundamentally wrong with my driving style. I'm going to have to have a much more detailed look at that at some point. Um, but I was much faster in the final two corners as we can see here and much faster in the sweeping right corners in the back section of the track as well. But let's go and have a look at the side by side analysis and see how they compare. Okay so we're having a look at the difference in apex speeds and straight line speeds here. Now the numbers on the left are my current fastest lap and the numbers on the right are my previous best lap so we can see here that um, I was a little bit faster into turn one turn two was kind of a bit slow but we gained a lot back on the exit so what we sacrificed on exit entry we made back on the exit here uh, neck and neck down this corner a bit more apex speed through the third corner but then a lot more speed throughout the exit you can see here the red line I was on the power a lot earlier and later on the brakes here and kind of dragged the brakes a little bit through here instead on my most recent lap which meant I could carry a lot more speed through this whole section pretty much 5k up the whole way around which is very significant when you add it up over the course of the corners same for the back section here the chicane I was a couple of kilometers up and same here that meant I was a couple of kilometers up approaching the back section uh, kept a bit of apex speed. I actually dropped a bit through here actually. I dropped some speed through here through the back section. Uh, the second to last corner was very fast and the last corner two more kilometers an hour through the apex there as well. Now let's have a look at the driving line so this will be very telling. So obviously just again to reiterate the red line is my new fastest lap which was over three quarters of a second faster. You can see here I took a lot more curb wasn't intentional I actually thought that was going to be a cut track but I ran wide through turn one and used a bit more curb at the start of turn two and it didn't give me a cut track so there's actually a lot of space to be found there and this is something that you'll find in your laps as well you have to use all of the track available now if you're not using all of the track if you're maybe like a meter wide that's going to make a huge difference that's going to make a huge difference because that's a meter closer to the apex you are that's a when you work out the you just travel less distance kept a much tighter line through this corner here and that meant i was much more breaking in a straight line you know you want to break in a straight line because if you're trying to turn and break the tire can only do so much in this instance straight down the middle the car was a lot more lined up with the apex and could get on the brakes a lot easier which meant i could also carry a lot more speed into the corner because i knew i could break later and exactly what I wanted to do here, this is exactly what I said I wanted to do. On my red line, I kept it more towards the outside and cut back. Because on my previous lap, the blue lap, um, I just ran it out a little bit too wide and lost a heap of speed on the straight. But this is a lot tighter, as you can see here, follow the mice around. And it just meant I could get on, the, get on the accelerator earlier. Okay, so one more thing I want to show you before I wrap this video up, guys, is... A look at the actual traces the throttle and the brake and the steering inputs the most recent lap is the bright color and the reference lap the original lap that i set before is the grayed out color the brakes again heading into the first corner compared to even before holding the brakes much later into the braking zone which meant i could scrub off less speed towards the apex so it looks like i was on the accelerator for longer for more i had to have a bit of a dip here to try and get the car to turn as you can see here the steering stays the same but the throttle dips out which means the car is going to grip up at the front and turn in more so that's what i was doing there and again at this point of the track i was on the throttle earlier which is just it's just going to help apex speed towards the next corner now this section here i really want to have a look at this was the switchback chicane at the end of the second sector and I was a couple of tenths up here but it felt a lot better to drive and you can see a huge difference especially in the throttle now the brakes on entry are a lot smoother on my faster lap whereas previously you can see here it kind of it's late it's late it's like oh there's a peak brake and then it's completely off whereas this was a lot more gradual that's going to make the car a lot more compliant and here on the throttle as well there's a bit of a dip going in but that helped steer the car into the corner it's so on the throttle earlier much more smooth on the throttle application and here is where the big difference is look at this guys 
on my original lap. I backed out of the throttle completely here. On the corner exit, you can see where we are on the track here, on the corner exit, I'm completely off the throttle on my previous lap, whereas on my current lap, my fastest lap that was three quarters of a second faster, I'm already on full beans. And that's because I've braked less, I've been more gradual on the steering, and I've just set myself up. And you can see here, corner speed, I actually lose corner speed here, whereas on my fastest lap, I'm maybe a little bit slower here, I'm only 124, but at the exit, I'm 13 kilometers an hour faster. And that is huge. So there you have it guys, by using telemetry to analyse my driving and my car behaviour, I was able to shave off 1.25 seconds at Oshislaben in the Porsche. And it wasn't even that difficult. Now of course this way of going sim racing isn't for everybody, especially not if you're just going for a casual drive or just not taking it too seriously. But if you're keen to improve your lap times and you want to know how to get better as a driver then this is probably one of the most effective ways to do so. I'll upload the log file from my best lap and I'll put a link in the video description along with a link to the Z1 Analyzer software. So if you want to, you can go out and set your very own lap with this car track combo on the race room leaderboards and compare your data to mine. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and you found it useful. If you did, please consider leaving it a like and I'd be so keen to hear your thoughts in the comments as well. Do you use telemetry? And if not, are you now thinking about using it? Do you have any questions or things you're not sure about? Let me know in the comments guys and don't forget to subscribe to the channel to see me put all of this into action in my upcoming races. Anyway, thanks for watching guys, look after yourself and I'll see you all real soon.